Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at today's REACH event for Mature Learners. Um, we're joined by two guests later today um, and before moving on to our first session with one of our current Mature Learners, Jay, I'm going to quickly pass over to our Managing Director, Hema Tank, who's just going to welcome you all to today's event. Great. Thanks, Freddie. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, as Freddie said, my name is Hema Tank. And I'm the Managing Director for the University. So that means I'm responsible for lots of different things across the university. But out of all of those tasks that I have, one of the ones that I really do enjoy the most is something like this, where I'm able to talk to different groups of students about things that, uh, as a university, we're really passionate about and want to um, continue to do. So I'm really pleased that you're here today. Of course, before, we used to run these events live, and it was great because you come in, there'd be coffee, croissants, and stuff like that. But we have changed, and we are in a different environment. So it's great to see you all online at this time. And hopefully at some point, we'll be able to see you live on campus too. So this is a REACH event and REACH stands out for Roots to Enhancing Achievement. And um, this event has been running for a number of years now because as I said, as a university, we're really, really passionate about encouraging those from different backgrounds to come to the university and really consider a career in banking and finance. Um, we know, you know, these topics are discussed at boards and um, by the government, but, you know, at the, as, as a university, we're not only just talking about them, we're doing something about them. And that's why we are here today. Um, so today really is all about you. I do want you to make the most of this session. If you have any questions, please do ask and, and, and uh, just put, put up your hand or, you know, uh, just, just speak because this is such a small group. It's a small group, um, quite deliberate in a way, because it enables people, it will enable, it enables the speakers, it will enable the participants to um, ask questions, interact and make it really, really informal. So please do um, get involved. Um, we are recording this, as you probably are aware, and um, this will be, um, I'm going to get this wrong now. Uh, this will be shown on YouTube. So people have signed up to watch it on YouTube. So um, just to let you know that there is that if you want to kind of watch it again, um, that is available. So I'm not going to go on for much longer, but I just want to say it's really great to be here today. And I'm really pleased that you're here today. Please do make the most of this session. And um, yes, yeah, hopefully see you soon. I'm going to pass it back to Freddie now. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks so much, Emma. I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, just to echo what Emma said, this is going to be recorded. So we will be able to share this with everyone to watch at a later stage. And then thank you to everyone who will be watching this at a later stage you're on with us today. We've got two um, speakers here today and then followed by a session by myself at the end. Um, my name is Fred McCann. I'm the head of recruitment and admissions within the university team. Um, before we move on to a conversation with Jay, one of our students here at LIBF, we do have a session this afternoon with uh, Julian, who is head of financial advisor school. So he's going to be talking about um, people coming into the education space, um, coming from different backgrounds in terms of their work environments and starting the career into banking and finance a little bit differently. Um, but we're going to move on now to our interview with Jay. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jay. Yeah, hi, Freddie. Thank you very much. Wonderful. So I'm going to ask you a few questions here today. Please, everyone here, feel free to put some questions into the chat box throughout and we will have some time for some Q&A after. And once again, as Hammer said, you are also OK to unmute yourselves if you do have any questions you'd rather ask um, that way instead of using the chat box. So to get started, um, first of all, Jay, if you can just do a little introduction, your name, the degree you were studying and then the years you were studying in as well. Yeah, of course. So uh, my name is Jay Palmer. I'm a second year student here at London, London Institute of Banking and Finance, and I study uh, the Bachelor of Science of Honours in Finance, Investment and Risk. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So moving on to the first question, um, just get a little bit of a backstory about yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey into LIBF and into university? Yeah, sure. No problem. So I think uh, as a more mature student, I think you've all got a similar background in terms of, you know, we, we attend school, we then go on to college, etc. Um, when I went on to college, I actually did a business administration and finance course. Um, after college, I decided to go straight into full time work. You know, I, I, at the time, I didn't think university was sort of for me. Um, 
I soon realized in full-time work that I didn't really know what, what I wanted out of life. I didn't really know what I wanted to achieve, sort of experience I wanted to gain. So I then went ahead to uh, travel Australia for a year and uh, I worked in Australia for about um, America for about six months, et cetera. And um, it's only then when I came back, I decided to actually follow my interests and my interests were basically lying in finance. Um, in order to get into university, I went ahead and I took an, an extra higher access to education course in business and law and then applied for a few universities down in London. I thought London would be the best place to to really study, you know, if you can perform in, in a competitive environment like London, you can really perform anywhere in the world. And lucky enough, I got an offer to, to study at LIBF and here I am today. Wonderful, thank you so much. You. Obviously, I guess when you were looking to go back into education, there must've been some worries about being a mature learner, going back into university space, going back into learning and being in that setting. Um, obviously, luckily you picked LIBF. So can you tell us a little bit about how you found how you've currently found being a mature learner um, at the London Institute of Bank and Finance. Hundred percent. You know, I feel as though before you do something, you tend to have some worries. You know, you tend to be a little bit nervous. But well, honestly, since I've been at LIBF, you know, there's there's really been no difference. You know, you you're always going to find some some individuals. You, you know, a lot of people are younger than you. Maybe a lot of people are the same age as you or older than you, and different people you could you can like vibe with, etc. But at LIBF, I haven't really found that there's been a great difference. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm in a big city where I could still meet people on my sort of level. I could still go out and still do the things that I'm used to doing. Um, and you're always used to meeting people from different walks of life. And the advantage that I believe I have and that any mature learner actually has when they go back to university is that you have life experience, right? You have the experience of already maybe working in different roles, et cetera, or just year to year meeting different people experiencing different things and it is honestly a break from normal life as well in terms of going back to university and it also gives you a better target a better aim you know the end result and the decision you've made it's it's for a good outcome it's for a good achievement wonderful thank you so moving on um along the same lines is obviously the environment of being a mature learner in LIBF you know some people in here today you might have heard of LIBF or done other courses or qualifications so you might have a bit of an idea about what we do yeah. uh, later today I want to talk about the university side of things and what makes us different what makes our environment um a positive place for mature learners but talking from your own experience Jay why do you think the environment for mature learners in LIBF is sort of a good fit um, I think that's a good question, actually. I think I'll tie that in with the question that just popped up as to why I chose LIBF as well. Um, you know, it's it's 100% a good environment for mature learners. I mean, the reason LIBF sort of st stood out to me was originally LIBF were providing qualifications for in-work professionals before they were a university body. So straight off the bat, they've got that sort of professional experience behind them. And for just a university body, you actually do two courses in terms of banking and finance and finance investment and risk. So you could say somewhat LIBF is specialised, right? They specialise in those two courses. You can really hone every, all your energy and everything into those two courses alone. And the, the classes are a little bit smaller than usual. You know, it's not like the universities where you go into you have big lecture halls, the, the lecturer probably doesn't even know your name, etc. And that really sort of resonated with me where you can have more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your lecturer you can gain more from him. You can have actual conversation from him or her. And, uh, do you know, the, the lecturers actually have good work experience. We have a great lecturer called Ozzy, for example. He's worked in the banking industry for over 20 years. You know, he's worked for the likes of Lloyds Bank in Dubai, in Hong Kong. We have another lecturer called Michael, who's worked for Citibank. And you can have conversation with these individuals and get a real feel what it's like to work there, not necessarily just learn about it. Yeah, definitely. I, I can echo that from my side of things. I'll definitely be talking about, you know, the lecturers and the university side of it later. But moving away from LIBF and more into obviously the roles within banking and finance, um, what made you want to go into the industry? What was the sort of key thing and your sort of key drive in the minute to work within the industry? And then following from that, what sort of roles are you sort of looking to go into once you finish your degree? Yeah, of course. Cool. So I think it actually depends on who you are personally. You know, me personally, my experience in life, I believe finance is the backbone of society. You know, it may, may sound a bit blase, but that's just that's just how I feel. You know, it's exciting, right? It's challenging, it's ever-evolving. 
uh, fintech is a perfect example of new and exciting opportunities coming up in, in finance. And um, you know, I will I will say it because everyone's going to know wants to, wants to know. Of course, the money is better in in, in finance. You know, there, there is better money. Um, and I want to work in. Um, there's something called the buy side and sell side for you know people here that don't know etc. And the sell side is, for example, the investment banking divisions, merger and acquisitions. And then we have the buy side, which is more portfolio management, quantitative analysis. Me personally, I would like to take roles in sort of the buy side where I could be involved in active management on venture capital or go on to find something in fintech as well. Yeah, I think obviously one of the things you mentioned there that some people might might be aware of those sort of roles, some people might not be. And I think a common thing with mature learners, um, you do have a lot of people who have gone into a completely different industry, maybe work there for five, 10, 20 years, and then have sort of decided to switch careers completely. Um, and later on in our next session with Julian, I think he's really going to be a good person to talk about how you can swap your careers if the people in here have sort of gone down a different route and now want to go into finance. Um, but also you do have mature learners who might have not gone to university straight away and this is still their first career. Um, so that's sort of useful thing to sort of talk about when we think of mature learners. Um, obviously, you've talked about the sort of areas that you would like to go into within um, within finance. In terms of the modules that you've studied so far, which ones have you really enjoyed studying? Have you found them relevant for your sort of career path and what you really expected from the course? Yeah, I think the modules are, are really, really good and more informative than you think. You know, it's OK learning something, but you need to you need something that makes you think on top of that, that you can use in everyday life. So the, the, the two modules that really uh, that I really resonated with that I really liked was emerging markets and fintech. Do you know, in, in emerging markets, it's less sort of quantitative. You're looking at sort of socioeconomic backgrounds, et cetera, the different cultures between uh, contract cultures in the Western world and emerging markets in China. You know, it's very, very sort of relevant. And that sort of trickles down into every other area in finance. So everybody can sort of talk about emerging markets and it really helps you gain a good understanding of of the world we live in. Uh, FinTech is another module, which I absolutely I, I adore, to be honest. You know, these are the talking the likes of financial technologies, whether it be your Monzo Bank, your Revolut Bank, and how these challenge banks differ from your traditional banks, or maybe Barclays, HSBC. And, you know, you can think maybe how are they challenging against them? You know, are they working with them? Is there a battle going on? Um, and yeah, that's the, those, are, those are the two modules that, that I like the most. Yeah, and I think I'll sort of echo what our careers team normally say for those who are sort of thinking about fintech. You don't have to be a technological wizard or genius. Um, it's just being open to the idea of technology and understanding how it sort of influences day-to-day -day stuff, especially within finance. So that's the sort of thing our careers team say when you're looking at fintech. Um, and the exciting thing about fintech, if you were to come and study at LIBF, what you'd be studying in your um, fintech in year two, might not even exist right now. You know, it's chopping and changing all the time. The academics that we have teach on the course are professionals who work in the industry at the time. So it is an exciting module and um, definitely an exciting career to go down. So thank you for that. Um, away from the modules, um, in terms of yourself, your sort of background, have you had any mentors or inspirations um, related to the industry or anything like that? I mean, Again, it, it depends on your sort of personal outlook on life. I mean, my personally, my father was a good inspiration for me. Um, you know, running his own business since he was young, et cetera. Uh, me being brought up working in that business, I think that's what sort of drove me along this path. But in terms of more recent lights, you know, the lecturers are definitely inspiration and mentors that you should have. You know, I talked about Michael, I talked about Ozzy, et cetera. Um, LRBF also provides, you know, a whole host of opportunities, right? So, for example, we have a career coach called Nadim. Do you know, and I recently went to an interview and felt a bit nervous, wasn't too sure what to expect. But Nadim's whole sort of professionalism and the way he taught me to approach things differently and, and how to really get the best outcome out of something was something that I really needed. And, you know, LRBF also hold good talks and networking events, right? So I go there and attend fintech events or network events from individuals from the likes of Goldman Sachs. And, you know, you can ask them questions. And again, this is sort of, informs you and provides you with an opportunity to to gain more knowledge yeah i think that's a really interesting one you said about obviously mentors and i think from mature learners um a lot of them who is either you know have been working full-time or families or anything like that 
having someone who's a mentor who works in the industry or just in terms of their personal life is really useful to be able to have that support network to talk to when you're looking to obviously progress into a career within finance. Um, glad you mentioned Nadim and the rest of the careers team. Um, as ne yeah. Next question, I'm just going to ask, in relation to your time at LIBF, um, what would you say you've sort of taken away the most to support you um, in your sort of career journey so far? Yeah, I mean, first of all, the industry knowledge you can take, you know, it's huge. You know, the, the more you know, the more you realise you don't know. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because there's always room to grow, always room to progress, always room to gain more knowledge, right? And at the end of the day, this is why I'm here and hopefully why the mature, mature learners are here. We want to achieve more. We want to gain more knowledge and we want to grow. And the one thing I realized when I came to LBF and I started sort of learning about in this industry is that there's something for everyone, whether you're quite analytical minded, whether you know you like to be more social, you could go into relationship management if you are, et cetera. There is always something for everything for, for everyone. And it's also about your unique way of thinking. A perfect example of that was that LIBF were able to host a session from Amplify Trading where we took the roles of a banking simulation in terms of a sales trader and an asset management trader. And you can actually gain data points back on your style of trading, your style of portfolio management. And it helps you to acknowledge your, your risk competencies, you know, your traits, et cetera, what who you like as a person and what sort of areas in finance you are best suited for. Wonderful, thank you for that. Um, one last question for me before we open up to questions from the audience. Any sort of final tips and best bit of advice you'd give for someone um, not only wanting to get into banking and finance, but also as someone who's looking to go down a route as a student, um, you know, best bit of advice for mature learners as a student, and then also looking to go into the industry? Uh, number one best bit of advice I can give, whatever route you're going down, make sure you're actually interested. You know, try not to be swayed by the money, try not to be swayed by what's happening in the world right now. Make sure you as an individual are actually interested because further down the line, you know, I'm a second year student and this year and this year now, the modules I've done, if I wasn't interested in them, you know, I wouldn't have put much effort in them. I wouldn't have been able to get much out of them, etc. So first of all is make sure you're actually interested. Another one is, you know, be prepared to work hard. You know, a lot of things require you to work hard, but if you prepare to work hard, that's that's how you know it's worth it. And uh, I guess there will be knockbacks, right? You know, I think I was talking to you, Freddie, before this meeting started, actually, I, I got to the last stage of an interview with the BCB Group, and they're, they're Europe's leading trade and banking services provider for the digital asset economy. And unfortunately, I wasn't offered an opportunity, but I managed to get through to those four stages and get through to that last stage, right? So if I look about how much I've learned just getting to those stages, I've gained a lot. And in the two years I've been at LIBF, you know, I've done a certificate in Bloomberg, for example. I've got a level four diploma in trading financial markets from Amplified Trading. I've had a whole host of, of certificates and, and knowledge that I've gained as well. So there will be knockbacks, but they're necessary to help you grow. Yeah, definitely. I think that resilience piece is definitely something that, you know, all students need, especially going into the world of work and, you know, how competitive it is. You know, there's going to be situations like that. So like you say, having that, confidence and resilience in yourself I think is really important yeah so thank you we'll, we'll open up to questions there was one that you did see halfway through that I think you answered regarding what made you choose LIBF okay. um, there's a really interesting question about, about professional qualifications and how credits work now um, what I would say for that question um, personally I'm not an absolute expert in that but we can answer that question at a later stage and send an email out to all the attendees today um, Hema might know an answer, so if she does, you please feel free to jump in. But if not, we can talk to our... Oh, here she is. Hopefully that means she does know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that, and I think that's a great question. So it's, But it's not a straightforward answer, but the, there, it, there's opportunities there, because if you've done some level six qualifications already with us, um, maybe we need to talk to you about a master's degree and not necessarily an undergraduate degree. So maybe we should talk directly offline. Um, yeah, we'll be in touch. Yeah, and I think the useful thing to sort of for other people in the group regarding professional qualifications, you know, that is something that we have, have embedded into our undergraduate programs um, in the past and we'll be looking to do moving forward as well. Um, you know, LIBF, as well as having the undergraduate course and the master's course, I've got all these professional qualifications as well. So 
for those people looking to come into the industry, if you've had a different career so far as a mature learner, you know, there's lots of different options for where you can go. I've um, got a question here regarding um, what are the main challenges you faced as a, as a mature student? Main challenges? Uh, to be honest, the, the switch from full-time work to going back to study, that is actually a bigger challenge than you think, right? Because every day you're in a routine, you wake up at a certain time, you know you're at work by a certain time, you've got your lunchtime, et cetera, and your home and your routine. That doesn't necessarily get flipped on its head because you still have a routine of university, but it's very, very different. So the classes here will start about, start about 10, uh, give you enough time to travel in, et cetera. Then we'll have a couple of lectures, a break and another lecture uh, or seminar. Um, and that that's that's a big that's a big change for me personally from having a strict routine every day to to doing that. But again, it's it's all up to you. You know, if if the days you have off university, you use that to fill your time with studying, with progressing yourself in additional qualifications, or even if it's for physical or mental health, then then that's what that's what you should do. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. I think obviously with mature learners, you know how mature learners is anything over twenty one. So you'll have a lot of differences between mature learners their backgrounds their sort of life experience so i think in terms of those challenges there's each individual is going to have different challenges um and i think it's so important to be able to communicate that with the university so they're aware of the different things that you sort of need as an individual as well um which is a really useful thing to think about uh, another question regarding a bit more to libf again um what's it like being in the city what's it like studying in the city and just being around the sort of buzz of it well I'm not, I'm never leaving the city. <laughs> I think, I think that says a lot. I mean, I've always wanted to come down to London, you know, I've been down here before I even um, enrolled with LIBF and I love the city and it is one of the best cities in the world for a reason. You know, there's always something happening. It's always a buzz in that excitement, which I personally love. You know, you wake up in the morning, everything's hundred percent, you know, sort of let's go and you're never going to get bored. You know, there's always something to do in London. If you don't like one thing, you can find another thing. And uh, the networking, it's, it's a pretty incredible, the, the amount of networking that, that you can really do. You could be down the local pub, whether it's an alcoholic or non-alcoholic beer, and you, know, you could be speaking with someone who you could be, you know, could offer you an opportunity or could put you on to know someone else for you to gain some knowledge or to know somebody else to give you an invitation to something else, et cetera. So London is one of the best cities by far to study in. And yeah, I won't, you know, I won't be leaving. No, it's funny you said about being in the pub and having those conversations. The amount of times I walk past and see students there, it's, it's crazy the confidence that you've all got being able to go up to people, you know, just finish the day's work and have those networking opportunities and talking to them and building contacts. And I think being in an environment where you've got the opportunity to do that, um, you know, it's hard to potentially do that when you're a student at university. Um, and I think that actually mixes quite nicely with the next question. Um, don't know what you think. In terms of the culture, um, what's that like as a student? And I think personally from what I've seen at university you've got a mix of being able to feel like a student um, but at the same time it is a little bit more of that professional culture as well because you know where you are in the city you can go to the pub go to uh, lunch and you can have those networking opportunities you never know who you're going to walk into um, especially for like say for those evening events as well so I think that culture does fit in a bit more of that professional environment w would you agree with that? Yeah 100% I mean at the end of the day you know universities where it's, it's experienced like none other for a reason. You know, it's, it's professional experience as well as a student experience. It's your sort of stepping stone, as you like, you know, to the next stage. So 100%, you know, professional as well as that student engagement too, yeah. Wonderful, thanks so much. So I, I don't think we've got any other questions in at the moment. Um, we've got one more question in here. Um, uh, what extracurriculum activities would you recommend to undertake to improve your CV? Oh, good question. Good question. So first of all, any, any additional qualification, let's say, for example, you go on to study finance investment or risk like me, any sort of additional qualifications you show that resonate with your degree you're studying in terms of finance is perfect. So London Institute Bank of Finance actually have um, access to Bloomberg Terminal where you can jump on and you can study the Bloomberg uh, BMC e-learning course. And that gives you a certificate from Bloomberg themselves. Now, now what that's doing is that's introducing you to 
the Bloomberg terminal, the functions, the use of functions, and it's explaining to you what you can do with them. And that's a great qualification to have. Um, additional ones also would be even simply jumping on Coursera, you know, or Farage, I think the other one is. Citibank do uh, short internship courses on there as well, which are completely free, by the way. And you can gain a certificate, you can showcase it on your CV. And employers love that sort of stuff because it's showing initiative, it's showing that you want to learn, it's showing growth. And these little things do add up. And you might think if you do a course over two weeks, you might think four weeks later, well, you know, I forgot what I've done. But you, you really haven't because that's changed your way of thinking, that's changed what you've gained, etc. And um, of course, you know, any part time work, any volunteering you've done before, feel free to put it on your CV. Um, and yeah, you know, anything to, to make you stand out. Yeah, and I think relating that to sort of mature learners, um, some coming in at sort of different times, I think a lot of the time when I've spoken to them, it's maybe they're not having that confidence that they're going to be able to pick up enough sort of learning or have they missed too much sort of um, before they actually pick up the sort of undergraduate degree program. So I think having as many things in addition to the degree, like the Bloomberg staff, like the networking opportunities is definitely going to build their, their confidence when they are looking to come, come into the world of work. Um, wonderful. So I think we're going to leave it there. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today, Jay. I really appreciate that. Um, like I said, if anyone here today does have any other questions for Jay after today when you're watching the video, please feel free to get in touch with us. I'm sure Jay would be happy to answer any questions at a later stage as well via, via um, us at LIBF. So yeah, thank you very much. And have a lovely weekend, Jay. Awesome. Thank you, Freddie. Cheers. Wonderful. So up next, we should have Julian in the chat now. Um, I can see his name. So hopefully that is the same Julian who's going to be speaking today. Um, Julian's head of Quelta Financial Advisor School. And he is going to be talking a little bit about the sort of work that they do, um, more so about people coming into the world of banking and finance uh, in terms of the mature learners side of things. So there we are. How are you doing today, Julian? You all right? Good. Sorry, I didn't realise I hadn't put my camera on. No worries at all. Thanks so much. Um, okay. So that's... I'm going to pass over to you um, to sort of talk about like what what sort of stuff that you do in relating that yeah. to learners. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I'll jump back in. I'll ask you some questions, and then hopefully sure. we'll have some questions from the chat box as well. No, no problem at all. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good morning, all. Hope you're all well. Uh, this is a mature learners session, um, and you've got a mature speaker. There we are. All works <laughs> works well. Um, so. Um, as was stated, so I head up the the, the call to financial advisor school, um, and as the name would suggest, uh, you know, it is a school in many ways, and it's a school for individuals looking um, to uh, develop a career as a, as a financial advisor, and we take them through their professional qualifications um, against the the LIBF, hence the link. Um, and it is, you know, particularly of interest to us to talk about you know career changes mature learners etc i know there's a lot of definitions different definitions and characterizations of what a mature learner is or um you know a, a, um, <clears throat> you know a career changer but I don't, I don't think that matters really i think the the essence of what i'm going to talk about is is, is the same in terms of the characteristics the attributes that, that we look for what, what is attractive and also i think you've got to set that against the backdrop of the of the changing demographics that that we face ourselves, um, you know, so sort of societally, uh, there there are huge changes going on at the moment. Uh, you'll be aware of, of course, that you know we are an aging demographic. Uh, there are more and more of us living longer and and longer. Um, so that means there are more and more people uh, with more and more experience um, available. Uh, and actually with a diminishing workforce. So in other words, if I, if I were to say to you that in this year, 2022, 14 and a half million, and this is in the UK alone, 14 and a half million job vacancies that are going to be created simply by people leaving the workforce. Now, a lot of that is baby boomers retiring. You may have heard about or read about this thing called the Great Resignation. I don't know how sort of overinflated that is, to be honest, but yeah, the great resignation in part is down to you know individuals who perhaps were close to or could afford to retire using you know COVID lockdown etc furlough whatever it might be in the last couple of years to to you know make that decision and, and move on sooner rather than later. And that's that's what a lot of them have done. Um, and you'll also probably be aware that at the moment there are more 
job vacancies in the UK than there are people looking for work. Now, that, you know, that, that would suggest that that's a pretty terrific opportunity for people looking um, for, for work. Uh, and also, there's only 7 million out of that 14 and a half million, there's only 7 million younger people who would be available to fill those, those opportunities. So in other words, this is a fantastic opportunity and time to be talking about mature learners, career changes, that, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and from our point of view, you know, what, we, what, 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 what is really important to remember is the, uh, is the skill set that you, you bring. You know, if you've been in the workplace or if you've got a bit of life experience or what have you, that is incredibly valuable. And for some reason, and I, I don't know why it is, but for some reason, uh, especially like me, once you get into your 50s, etc., it, see, it actually seems to become less valued for, for some reason when you've got a great deal of experience. But, you know, if you remember, set that against the backdrop of what I've just been talking about, and, you know, actually employers um, and opportunities will increasingly open up to the, to the mature workforce uh, simply because of the sheer numbers and, and the sort of structural deficit that we have at the lower end so that's so that's that's a good thing so let me just talk you through some of the some of the, the sort of the characteristics the reasons why you know mature mature learners mature students etc uh, do so well i mean the obvious thing of course is that they bring more skills and experience with them yeah when i, when I started i started work in in august 1986 um so 36 years ago and i joined a bank i joined barclays bank um, the, the, the international branch in the city of London. And I remember my dad said to me at the time, that's it. You, you, that's it. You've got a job for life. You'll never need to uh, uh, you know, look elsewhere. And at the time, believe it or not, it was really frowned upon to move around. You know, you, if you had any holes in your CV, if, or if you looked like you were a, a, you know, a job hopper, um, that was really, really frowned upon. Of course, that has completely changed. Not only was banking is banking no longer a job for life, the building I worked in no longer exists. Um, uh, the roles have all been sort of taken over by uh, you know computers, etc., et and, and you know developments in, in IT. So um, you know the, the the landscape has 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 changed massively, and actually, what we really value now, on part of your currency, is uh, is the experience that you can bring. From, 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 from other workplaces as well. Your experiences in life, um, things that you've learned along the way, the way that some other companies or organizations do things, you know, you can bring that to the table and that, that, that's a real, that is a real currency that, that you bring, do, you know, do not under, underestimate that. Um, and we, you know, we, we sort of within the school and what we do in terms of taking people on to train them to become financial advisors, that life experience is invaluable. Um, you know, so so that's something that we we really look for. What you tend to also find, and I know is probably I can't see any of you, so I'm suspecting there's quite a, it might be an age range here or broad rate age range, or you might all be really young. I, I don't know, but the point is, what you'll find is, as you get older, all the evidence also suggests that you bring a degree of stability to an employer. <clears throat> so, uh, in in other words, and a lot of this evidence comes from the US, but if you look at workers' medium tenure in the US between the ages of 55 and 64, it's, it's 10.4 years, compared to just three years for those between the ages of 25 and 34. And, and, and so you tend to, to find as you do get older, uh, you are more likely to um, be more stable because you're less likely to be looking to climb that career ladder. You might well have, um, uh, you know, your kids may well be grown up. Uh, you might have paid off your mortgage you might have done some of those things that mean you don't need to be rocking the boat and you know trying to cr climb that career ladder so you tend to stay put for, for a little bit longer your emphasis your focus your priorities change and i i personally really really found that myself uh, as well what else you bring you bring and this is what we really really value you bring huge self-motivation um what do i mean by that well if you've been in the workplace for a, for a little while and you choose to move on to do something else, it's because you've chosen to do that. And that's really powerful. That tends to me that you've made the decision, you're empowered to, um, to try and pursue that with a, a degree of focus that you perhaps don't find uh, elsewhere. So we tend to find those individuals that have put their hand up, who've said, I want to do this, 
tend to go on and do it and become really successful. We don't need to worry about motivating those those individuals. So they bring you know stability uh, and a great degree of sort of self motivation. What they also help with, of course, is uh, diversity. They help train the next um, uh, cohort of, of, of workers, etc. Um, and I said before, what you also tend to find is that they tend to, you know, for want of a better term, rock the boat less um, and just get on with sort of plowing their own furrow, if, if you like, rather than worrying about what, what is what is going on. So there's there are a huge number of, of, of characteristics and attributes that, that mature workers, career changes, etc. look for. I mean, we, you know, we, we sort of tend to fish in certain pools for those maturer candidates and people that we tend to find that provide a real sense of focus and achievement would be um, individuals that have been in the military for instance or ex-sports professionals Paralympians in particular have a different level of focus um, and, and uh, ability to adapt than we find elsewhere so you know if, if, if you can learn anything from uh, exports, military individuals, et cetera, about that sense of dedication, focus, determination, then that's that's a really useful uh, attribute to bring to a workplace or you know, a different situation uh, as, as you go forward. So I think um, the other thing to bear in mind, of course, is that we no longer, you know, again, when I started work, without sounding like your dad here, <laughs> when I started work, there was a defined retirement age. I mean, you were lucky when I joined the bank, you were lucky, lucky to make it past 50. 55, you were, you know, you were one of the old duffers. Um, now there is no retirement age. Uh, we're all living longer, we're healthier, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a shortage of labor. Um, and, uh, you know, that throws up massive, massive opportunities, I think, uh, you know, and that's likely to, because it's structural, that, that it's not a flash in the pan, that is likely to remain with us. And of course, we've had other sort of ex external issues such as, you know Brexit, etc., as well, which have just accelerated that. To, to be honest, so it's a it's a terrific place to be. And if you've got any experience at all, um, you know any anything that you any of those areas that you can you can bring along. That's that's what you know. That's what sort of ticks our boxes, if, if you like, when we're looking at taking people on within the school. Um, I think somebody has put their hand up there. Let me just have a. Is it somebody put their hand up? Right, I don't think that was. Is that for me? That 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 question. What excellent? No, that was from the last. Yeah, that, that was from the last last last. That was from the last session, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, right. Ignore that. Yeah, so I know. So for, pretty brief, but I think it's it, to to a degree. It's pretty self explanatory it, 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 It's it, it's self evident to a degree in terms of what a mature student, what a mature individual brings. But I know that that definition um, is. is of, of what a mature student is or mature candidate is is, is, is is sort of wide ranging. You'll tend to find that nearly all the research around maturity is are individuals over 50. That that would be the sort of the generalized definition of, of mature. Um, well, I'm a man, so I, I can honestly say hand on heart, I've, I'm not mature. <laughs> even, even in my 50s, definitely not mature, um, as a lot of men are aren't but that's so a lot of the research a lot of things that you see um flag up if you google any of this stuff it's all over 50s but i think any of those attributes that i've talked about you know stability self-motivation etc you know they're characteristics that anybody can sort of bring bring to the table but maybe if you're a bit younger maybe just you know accentuate those demonstrate those a, a little bit more or find ways of you know um being able to explain that that's what that's what you're bringing to the table Okay. Yeah, wonderful. Thanks so much. And there's a, lo a lot to unpack there. Um, and please, everyone, please ask some questions in the chat box if you have any. Um, so someone's popped a question in there. What's the biggest skill you think you need to be successful in finance? Well, finance is a huge and broad church. So it depends what you mean by that. Um, it, it, I can talk about my, my experience, certainly within uh financial services financial advice the the you know the biggest skill is the ability to 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 work with people um be a people person uh, at the end of the day whatever qualifications you've got whatever role you're in you have to work with people you have to understand people work with them um work for them 
um, uh, people work for you. Uh, and there, there, you know, there are lots of different skills that, uh, around that that you would need. But certainly within financial advice, it's around uh, being interested in and being able to uh, deal with people. So I don't know if that, I know it's a bit of a, a, a sort of a grey answer, but finance is just such a huge area. Yeah, I think one question I had, I think you spoke really well about, you know, why mature learners are suited, the sort of skills that they have, which are suited to sort of that transition. In terms of the challenges, though, what do you think are the biggest challenges? And I think an interesting point that you said, mature learners can range massively. So they're all going to have different challenges. They're all going to have different things going on in their life. But what's a common thing you've seen, if there is a common thing you've seen for mature learners making that transition? What the, probably the biggest challenge as you as you sort of progress in life is, um, as, as a lot of you will know, once you start, once you start on the sort of career ladder, you know, you feel like a millionaire in the first few months, don't you? Um, and then you start spending that money and then you start borrowing against that money. And then suddenly you find yourself in a property or renting and you've got a car and uh, you want to go on holiday and buy clothes and go out for dinner and um, have children and blah, 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 blah. And before you know it, you, you feel there's a sense of feeling trapped and that you're on, on, a, on, a, on a sort of a hamster wheel that you, that you, you, you can't really get off. Um, and so what we find people looking to tran transition is, uh, is understanding the challenges that those individuals have and maybe offering a degree of support around that. So something certainly we, we look at within the business this, this to provide a degree of financial support to people to help them transition into a new career. Because if, if you think about it, you know, I started, as I said, in 1986. Um, I've probably got another... 10 15 years of work left that's a long long time to be to be at work so what i always say do what you love find what you love and if you love it, it you tend to love it because you're good at it and you'll be good at it because you love it etc so that's the most important thing don't worry about money that always follows it, it, it in the end so um be, be do what you're good at and don't don't you know try not to Try not to overcommit, and, and so that you are stuck on that, that hamster wheel. And be honest as well. You know, if I can pass on any advice and skills in life, is look yourself in the mirror and say, "Am I really enjoying this, or am I doing this for everybody else?" You know, is this something I want to really do for 40, 50 years of my life? Um, uh, you know, and so, so, so be, be honest with yourself. Right, there's a couple more questions that have come in there by the looks of it. Uh, what will jobs in finance look like in five years' time? Gosh. Um, I think you can't ignore the um, changes that technology are bringing about, um, particularly uh, in areas of automation, automating certain roles. Uh, you know, in our world within financial services, I think you'll see the the the, fate, the way that financial advice is delivered it changes. COVID has sped that up. Um, and what I mean by that is typically it was always done face to face. We're now using technology to deliver advice and clients seem to be very comfortable with that. I think you're going to see a huge development in uh, AI within this area. So a lot of advice will be automated. Um, but still, and the one thing you will never get away from within financial services is the need for individuals to have bespoke individual advice when things get really technical. So, you know, systems simply won't be able to cope with, you know, some of those more technical aspects of advice. But I think, you know, don't underestimate the changes that technology will have. And I think finance has been really um, poor um, and behind in terms of um, utilizing technology. So I think you'll, you'll see some, some real leaps um, uh, uh, going, going forward in, in that sense. Uh, are there any specific roles in the finance world you would not advise someone 30 years old to try and enter gosh these are these are broad questions listen i don't know about all the finance roles i, I worked in investment management for 27 years i worked for a bank for six or eight years um and i've been doing this sort of role for the last uh 12 years 13 years um so what are there any specific roles in the finance world you would not advise someone 30 years to, to, to try and enter <sighs> Not, not, no, not. I can't think of anything off the top, off the top of my head. You know, markets quite, markets are quite efficient. So roles that are no longer required tend to sort of wither, wither on the vine, etc. Yeah. You know, what, what I have seen in finance in the last 
few years is a massive demand for areas such as risk and compliance, those kind of roles within finance. You know, we are a heavily regulated, will continue to be, and rightly so, heavily regulated um, uh, industry. And um, so those roles that help a business control their risk and their brand reputation, et cetera, they, there seems to be a real premium attached to them. Um, and, uh, you know, so, you know, so that, that you know, that's, that's a, a function that is not, uh, not going anywhere. Um, okay, so here we are. I, investment bankers are usually taken straight from graduating at 22, 23 years of age. Yes, yes, they are. Um, you know, there's a number of reasons, aren't there, for that. Um, you're you're young, impressionable. Um, you're more likely to um, uh, uh, be more easily inf not influenced. Isn't the right word? What's the word? Um, I'm trying to to, to find. Um, they can sort of um, teach you the way that they do things. You're more likely to work longer hours. You're more likely to uh, not challenge things. And the more and more experience you get, what you tend to find, you begin to challenge things because you say, well, I've seen that before, that worked, that didn't work, et cetera. Um, and um, so, you know, and you're, oh, by the way, and you're cheaper. <laughs> uh, you, when you're 22, 23 years old, you're cheap and uh, they can mold you. Um, uh, and there's a reason they don't take 53 year olds on because we're too expensive and um, we'd um, we'd argue the toss with them every five minutes and they wouldn't like that so that's so that that's a that's a that's a problem uh, sorry to just jump in and i think that maybe goes back to one of the questions i had about the challenges i think maybe things that maybe put mature learners off going into changing career path is some of those stereotypes about the type of people who go into different roles if they're going to be suited to those roles as well and mm, i think yeah talking to mature learners from um, university sometimes it is that confidence that there are different roles that will be more suited to them in terms of their personality and their age and where they're at but also some of those stereotypes don't necessarily have to be there um, you know they're mature learners you know, who, who, who I know who are above 30 who go into work in investment banks and they've just it's more that personality side of things not the age side of things really isn't it yeah 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 I think you know a lot has changed in the workplace you've got to remember that when as a, you know I, I I run a team and one of the things you can't ask people about is their age anymore um so that actually that's that's discounted I'll tell you what it's really about and it genuinely genuinely is it's about your ability um but of course you've got to get in the door in the first place so what I would you know another piece of advice I would give is um you know you're not always going to get your ideal roles first out you know, you, you might have to either take a step backwards or take a sideways move or move into a role, but within an organization that you want, but a role that you don't want, because what companies are very good at these days, and again, it's changed hugely, is transferring uh, talent around within a business. You know, companies are much better now at transferring skill sets around the business to, as to where they, uh, where, you know, where they work best. So I think as much as anything, just get your foot in the door into a into roughly a, an organization or an area or a sector that you that, that you look for gain some experience and don't be frightened from to move to move on because you know businesses are looking to buy that experience and at the moment and i can't see this changing for a bit you know employees are in the driving seat employees have all the power right now they really do i mean we yeah you know, we, we've really noticed it in in the last 12 18 months or so you know that there's the sort of lack of you know, individuals looking for work, sort of salaries are looking to com command, etc. And I think in employers have to be, you know, responsive to, to to that. So you're very much in the driving seat, but don't expect to get the chief exec role at the age of 22, 23, and be earning millions from day one. You're going to have to work. You have to work at these things, but just get your foot in the door, and you can move. You can move wherever. You know, I'll give you another example. My eldest daughter, she. Um, she worked in investment management, um, uh, gosh, nearly 10 years ago now. She's 30 now. Um, you know, and she, she, she came in, as, in, in into a marketing function, et cetera. She's now, she's moved through various roles, digital roles, et cetera, and now she's in compliance and is really building a career there. And it's taken her about 10 years to find out what she loves and what she's good at and, you know, where, where, the, where the money is for her as well. So, you know take take a long-term view because your you know careers are going to stretch for a long time right okay heading back into education as a mature student can be daunting do you have any tips on how to readjust to life as a student i think um it's a good question 
what I would say, and I think I alluded to this earlier on, is what we find is those people that self-consciously re-enter the education arena tend to do really well because you understand why you're doing it, you want to, to do it, um, and you, we, we find your focus and commitment and determination can be much higher than some other, other individuals. So I wouldn't be daunted. I'd see it as a real advantage that you've obviously, you know, and I'm, if this is your your case, that you've said this is this is a road I, I wish to 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 take. Um, yes, it can be daunting, but 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 honestly, you, you'll you'll find that actually you'll 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 probably sail through it reasonably comfortably because that level of determination in, um, is is there that wasn't there perhaps when you when you did your GCSEs. <laughs> you know, this time you really want to do this. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm just going to um, call it there so we can just move on with the next session. But thank you so much for joining us. And that's really useful, Julian. Um, and for anyone, I know we've got a lot of people who will be watching this at a later stage um, when it comes onto YouTube. If you do have any questions, Julian, I'm sure you'd be happy to help and have, happy to answer any. So do send them over to us at LIBF and we'll be able to share them with him and share them with the, with the attendees here today as well. Yeah, no, no problem at all. Thanks ever so much, everybody. Thanks bye. so much. Okay, bye. Lovely stuff, guys. So we've got our last session um, just before I'll try and be finishing on time before 12 o'clock. So I'm briefly going to talk a little bit about LIBF, um, what makes our undergraduate degree programs a little bit different, um, and also a new support program that we've launched for mature learners as well. So I'm just going to share my screen now. hopefully you can all see this all okay um i can't see the chat box so um if i don't hear anything i'm assuming that everything is all okay and you can see this um, i'm going to play a short video um, which talks a little bit about libf before moving on to talk about the degrees in more detail Wonderful. So you saw some stats there and you saw some of the um, important connections that we have within the industry. But we spoke about a lot of our networking and the connections that LIBF have. Um, and that goes back to the fact that we were founded back in 1879, as we were founded as the Institute of Bankers. We were the place that people go to become qualified and go on to work within, within the banking and finance industry. And an element of that still exists through our professional qualifications that we spoke about a little bit earlier on today. As well as delivering professional qualifications, we work with um, a number of schools up and down the country to do financial education, predominantly in year 12 and year 13 for those students. And then as of 2011, we launched our full time undergraduate degree programs as well. I think it's really important to know the sort of heritage and experience that LIBF have, um, especially when we're talking about the career side of things, the opportunities our students get to network and interact with senior people who are professionals within the industry. Um, you saw a stat there that number one in the UK for banking and finance employment of students, that goes back to the experience and connections that we've got within the industry. So a little bit about why the university is different. Um, first of all, we're a small university provider. We've only got two courses, which I'll talk about in a second. 
the importance for all students, but I think definitely from uh, mature students that we've spoken about today, is having that personalised support, coming back into that education um, or coming into education where you don't necessarily feel confident in the subject or you have been there for a while, having a small student body so you get a lot more one-to-one -one support with academic, with our uh, library team, our careers team, our support team, give you the best chance of having the best grade possible um, and ensuring your experience of university as well. Obviously very specialised, all of our degrees uh, focused on banking and finance, um, lots of different benefits for that. Um, I personally think it's more for the career side of things that our careers team are experts in banking and finance or their connections or their experience are getting our students jo uh, jobs and roles within the banking and finance space. It was mentioned earlier as well, our lecturers have a blend of academic and practitioner experience. It means they've worked in the industry before for 20, 30, 40 plus years. They can talk to you about their different experiences of working in the industry, you know, really bring the classroom to life. And I think it's important having that academic, that person you're learning from, who someone's actually been there and done it and experienced all the things that you're looking to experience in your job search. Location, uh, being in the city of London, I think it's really important to be in an environment where you feel like you can learn. And also when we talk about that networking opportunities, being in London, being in the city, you'll have so many different learning uh, opportunities and networking opportunities from just the location that you're in alone. Um, you, I mentioned this earlier as well, gaining a professional qualification um, at the same time as doing a degree. At the moment for the cohort at the minute is the certificate in relationship management, but that is something that the university are looking at because we've got so many different professional qualifications, it might be that there's different professional qualifications offered at the same time as doing your degree. And once again, that's something else that you can put onto your CV um, that makes you stand out a little bit more when you finish your degree. We're part of the CFA Affiliated University Programme, which is a Chartered Financial Analyst Programme, um, which is once again a fantastic thing that you can put into your CV and a conversational piece when you're looking to apply for different roles. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the prestige lectures and networking events on the next slide as I know we sort of press the time a little bit. So careers and employability, this is something, you know, a lot of universities will cover that have careers um, and employability teams. But what we do at LIPF is a little bit different and that's back to our heritage, our connections and also the personalised approach that we can sort of connect with students in a different way. You'll have one to one career coaching, looking at CV cover letters, mock interviews, weekly job alerts. These are the sort of things that you know a lot of universities do, but going back to the connections that we have, the fact that all of our experience, all of our connections are in one subject area, being banking and finance, you know, that what makes us number one in the UK for the uh, banking and finance of undergraduate students as well. And I think for mature learners, that's a really important thing. You know, you're going back into education because you're looking to change careers and having a real career focus to get as much help and as much experience as possible before you go into the world of work and that is going to make you stand out when you're looking for that job role. Exposure to the industry, so these are our on-campus events, also online events that we picked up um, as of obviously 2020. It's an opportunity for you to be in that environment, you know, a lot of university courses you don't necessarily get to be in an environment where you're face-to-face -face networking with senior people who work in the banking and finance industry. It's fantastic for connections, um, you know, there's not many opportunities you would normally get doing that. And more importantly, it's about experience and confidence, putting you in that situation where you're having conversations, you're networking with professional people. You don't tend to get that a lot of opportunities. So when you've finished your um, degree, you know, you know the right things to say, you know the right people to approach. And it just does give you that confidence that you've been in those settings before. Career paths. Um, so you can go into different career paths between the two roles. It's not just limited to these roles. But predominantly for our banking and finance course, people go into strategic management roles, uh, risk management, commercial and corporate banking and retail banking. And for the finance investment and risk course, a bit more the maths and numbers side of things, looking at investment banking, sales, trading, research, hedge fund roles, wealth and asset management and brokerage roles. Now I'll move on from this. I won't spend too much as I know we're sort of pressed for time, as I said, but these are our two degree programs and all the modules that you would um, be able to do. At the very end of this, I'm um, actually now, my colleague might be able to put our prospectus into the chat where you can have a look at the prospectus and all these modules are there in a bit more detail. We've also got a QR code at the end, which you can scan on your phone and takes you through to the prospectus as well. Um, but these are the different modules that we currently deliver on the two courses. 
Now, finally, um, rewrite your future. So this is a new program that we've launched for mature learners specifically. It's additional support that we give to our mature learners to make sure they have the best time, get the best grades, get the best career support and enjoy themselves the most um, when they're coming here as a student. Different scholarships available, um, each worth up to £1,500. You know, mature learners have different sort of backgrounds that they're going on with my families, taking that risk from leaving a job to go and pursue something different. So that financial support is really important. Uh, regular meetings with our HE programmes team, support non-academic matters. Uh, once again, that personalised approach that all of our support team will know your name really does benefit you if there's any non-academic matters that you need help with. Regular meetings with faculty, you know, if you do need that extra help and things are a little bit harder because you've been out of education for so long, you know, having those one to ones meetings with the academics are really helpful. Once again, if you have been out of um, academia for a while, the library team helped massively with looking at research, academic writing, referencing. These are things that maybe you've never done before or it's been so long that they sort of slipped your mind as well. Greater flexibility with timetable options. So this is really important once again. If you've got family, other commitments, um, having that flexibility with your timetable is really important. You know, if you are coming into this university, you know, 60% or just over of that do actually commute in. So it's not a university where everyone's on campus and you might not feel that you can fit in. Uh, all pretty much, let's like say, over half of our students are commuting in. So you're not going to be the only person doing that. But in terms of that flexibility of timetable, that's really important for, for those mature learners. And then finally, an industry mentor to support you in your career aspirations. Uh, we spoke about if anyone has those sort of mentors and inspirations in the industry, this is another thing that you can gain um, to have those conversations, ask those questions to someone who's been there, done it, and is working in the industry at the time. So I tried to get through that in as best time as possible. Um, I say my colleague would have put the prospectus in already. If anyone wants to scan that QR code, that does take them through to the prospectus on their phone. Um, like I say this will be shared at the end as well, so you can get that at a later stage. So that is it from me. Thank you so much for joining. Um, the last thing that I'll put in is any future events that we are holding. Um, so you can have a look at open days that you could potentially attend. We also do one-to-one -one drop in sessions or our admissions team, which are bespoke sessions that you can come look around both our campuses and ask any questions that you might have. And I think having that jump to go back into higher education is really important to know who you're going to be. Um, with in terms of student body, the support team. So it's good to come to campus and have a little look around to get a good feel for it. Thank you so much for the people who participated and asked questions today. If you do have any other questions after today, please do get in touch. And for those who are gonna be watching at a later stage on YouTube, um, thank you so much for watching. If you do have any other questions, please do drop us an email. And we can circulate them with our speakers today and hopefully get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks so much everyone, have a lovely weekend. Mm -hmm.